When it comes to high quality wireless headphones in 2023, I think we are just a little bit spoilt for good choice. And while I think that's fantastic for so many reasons, it actually makes your job, the consumer's job, harder to decide where to best place their hard earned money. So in this review of the Bowers & Wilkins PX8, I'm going to see if I can help you decide of whether these are the right headphones for you compared to the Mark Levinson number 5909 or the Apple AirPods Max, or whether you should even upgrade from the original Bowers & Wilkins PX7 headphones. <music> So I want to start this review of the Bowers & Wilkins PX8 headphones with just a little bit of additional insight. Last year, I visited Bowers HQ in Worthing for the launch of their new 700 S3 speakers. But while I was there, I got hands-on with the new PX8 headphones and also got hands-on with the new domed carbon drivers that's used in them. And when you put the driver side by side with the new driver that's designed for the PX7 S2 headphones, you can see a very obvious difference in the driver material. Now, more interesting to me was a presentation given to us by Bowers & Wilkins Marketing Director Andy Kerr. But what I remember most was Andy showing us a graph of the driver behavior, the new carbon driver behavior, and how smooth it was in the higher frequencies compared to even the newly developed driver for the PX7 S2 headphones. And I found this super interesting because when we think about when we're listening to a pair of headphones, we are listening to really single driver audio solutions. So when I think about the importance of driver quality in a set of headphones, it starts to make sense to me why some of these new higher performance wireless headphones that we're seeing on the market today are costing a lot more money because the drivers in them are getting better and the drivers in them are, are important and I'm happy to pay more money if, if the money's going into better quality drivers because it inevitably will mean better quality performance. But when I think about the current price of the PX8, I saw them on Amazon for £575 and even slightly cheaper in a few other UK retailers. And I think that is fantastically good value actually for what we are getting here. Because firstly, we are getting style. I think the Bowers PX8 look fantastic. They are a nice mixture of modern and stylish, but understated enough as to not draw too much attention to themselves when you are out in public and I would happily wear these on a daily work commute without feeling self-conscious. And I have done so. I took the PX8 with me to Denmark and to Sweden. So I wore them for many hours sat waiting at an airport waiting for flights. So I had these on my head for oh, a crazy number of hours and I found them really comfortable actually, extremely comfortable to wear for Oh, I, don't, I don't even want to remember how many hours I was sat at the airport. What I found more interesting was when I wasn't wearing them at the airport, when I took them off and I was wearing them around my neck, I found them just really comfortable. I found them a nice size and a nice weight. And they, yeah, they just sat on my neck really comfortably without you know rubbing my chin or anything like that. So these types of things, these fit and feature things are not easily measurable, they're not easily quantifiable, but they do make the difference. I think do make the difference between you actually wanting to take something like this with you on a journey. Combined with one of the journeys, I had a young family sitting in front of me with a young child who decided to cry on, on a number of occasions. So it was an extremely good test for the noise cancelling. And throughout the whole four flights, yes, I was aware that I was on a plane because of that rumble, but I think you feel that rumble as much as you hear it. And I could hear the child crying from time to time, but never once was I pulled out of the content that I was watching on my phone or pulled out of the music that I was listening to. So for me, the PX8 very much passed the noise cancellation test. But watching this channel, you should know that I am all about sound quality. And I think the Bowers strike gold there as well, but maybe not necessarily for everyone or straight out of the box. So I think it's important to talk about their most useful feature. And that is the new Bowers music app. For the PX8, we get one special feature. And that is a bass and treble adjustment that you will need. 
although straight out of the box with no noise cancelling, I haven't really got too much to complain about here for the PX8. Yes, Bowers have gone for a warmer, richer, bolder type of overall sound presentation, which I really don't mind at all. But there's one standout, one really standout sonic trait that they have, and that is there's a slight boldness, over boldness or bloomed character to, to the lower vocal region, combined with a few other things that just gives vocals this fantastic glossy type of character. And I noticed it straight away with big soulful female vocalists. And I listen to a lot of that music. Lately, I've been listening to Lady Blackbird, Black Acid Soul, that album. I've been listening to Celeste, Compilation 1.1, and also to Dominic Feels A Me, in particular, the song Birds. And on all of these albums, the PX8 deliver the music with extreme smoothness, especially in the treble. Nice immediacy, nice clarity, good rhythm and soul. But the bolder, warmer type of overall sound presentation of it can just maybe congest the overall soundstage at times, just, just a little bit. But this is something that you definitely notice more when you engage the active noise cancellation because that emboldens the bass quite a noticeable amount like it does with most headphones. And that is where the music app with the controls, the adjustment, the tone controls really pays dividends because with a slight bass reduction and a slight treble increase, you're able to open up the soundstage and allows vocals to come through with more clarity and just a bit more presence. And that slight increase, maybe a half a decibel increase in the treble just helps to create a sound that has a little bit more air to it. But more in important is the way it extends the overall sound. So it, it makes the sound taller, but it kind of extends the dy perceived dynamic range capability of the headphones because there is now a, a bigger gap, a bigger space between the bass and the treble. So it just ex extends the sound up some. And you can increase the treble quite a noticeable amount without any fear because the PX8 are so smooth, so smooth in the treble. But be careful reducing the bass because if you take the bass out too much, yes, it will open the sound up more and it will create more space for the vocals, but it will start to rob them of that lovely glossy character that I think is the shining star, the real character, the real star of the PX8. So in isolation, the Bowers are very convincing wireless headphones that I would buy for their looks, comfort, sound quality, and flexibility for traveling. But how do they stack up against the competition? With the big competitor for me being the Mark Levinson number 5909 that costs nearly twice as much, but doesn't have the ability to tune the sound in quite the same way. Well, for the looks, I prefer the Bowers. For all the buttons and controls, I prefer the aluminium buttons on the Bowers. But for wearing comfort, I do slightly, just ever so slightly, prefer the Mark Levinson. The, the thicker ear pad cushions just mean there's just a little bit more softness and they feel maybe just a little bit more even on my you know, quite large sized head. But speaking of large, you can see the fact that they have this larger cushion means that they are then a much, much larger headphone to wear. As you can probably see, the Bowers are still quite large, but much more discreet compared to the Mark Levinson, I think, and I think the Mark Levinson are so large that I would feel self-conscious wearing these out in public or feel self-conscious wearing these on a daily commute to work, whereas the Bowers, I wouldn't. The Bowers, I would quite happily wear. But what about the sound quality differences? Well, this is interesting because these are like total chalk and cheese sounding headphones. The Bowers, as I mentioned, have this big, warm, rich, glossy type of sound character, which is really very pleasing. Everything sounds very pleasing. Whereas the Mark Levinson sound really quite bass lean by comparison. Even when you've engaged their dedicated app to increase the bass, they still sound really quite bass lean compared to the Bowers. But it's not that they necessarily are bass lean. The bass delivery from both of these headphones is fantastic. It's just very different. But there are some other differences too, such as the Mark Levinson seem to have a little bit of lower treble, upper mid-range, upper vocal region presence 
whereas the Bowers seem to have a bit of a recession there. So the vocals have a bit more bite and a bit more crispness to them from the Levinsons, and they're a bit softer and a bit more, a bit more lush sounding from the Bowers. And that's combined with a little bit of lower vocal region leanness from the Levinsons, which does give them a more open type of overall soundstage. And their soundstage is more precisely organized or specific details are just more present and precise across a soundstage, more in a high-end hi-fi speaker type of fashion. And I would say that the Levinsons are possibly the more technically accurate of the two headphones, if there is such a thing, but that doesn't necessarily make them the more pleasing of the headphones to listen to, which can, I think, definitely depend on, I suppose, the music that you're listening to and the music that you favor. And I suppose in that regard, with the music that I've been listening to a lot lately, which is quite poppy, dancey, very soulful type of music, the ultra overall pleasing factor, that lovely glossy character of the Bowers and Wilkins, I think, probably gives them the win for me for that type of music, but I can see other audio files completely seeing it the other way around. It just depends on purely a preference thing here, I think, and maybe even what day of the week it is. The next comparison for me is an easy one. How do the Bowers fare against the Apple AirPods Max? Well, there is no comparison really. The Apple's bass is a bit flabby, loose by comparison, and the Apple have quite a processed sound, which in some ways I like because it means treble details are really very present and their overall sound character is very organized. But you can hear that there is just this digital haze over everything with, with the Apple AirPods Max. It's just a little bit of a glaze and a little bit of a haze, which you do not get anything like that with the PX8. In fact, the PX8 sound much more analog compared to the Apple AirPods Max. And I hate that analogy, I hate that simile because it's so cliche, but it really is very apt in this situation. It's just the bowels are so lush and rich and smooth. They do sound really very analog by comparison. There's, there's no comparison here for sound quality. The PX8 are significantly better. So that just leaves my final question. If you own the original Bowers & Wilkins PX7, should you consider upgrading to the PX8 for nearly double the cost? Well, straight away, the PX8 are just a much nicer and more modern looking headphones. And they're generally just a lot nicer in terms of all the materials, so you definitely won't be disappointed in that regard, especially considering shape-wise and weight-wise, they are very similar. So you won't be trading off any weight for the better materials. And one big difference you, you do notice is the clamping force. The clamping force of the PX7, it's absolutely fine, but it's just maybe just a little bit too tight, just a little bit too much squash going on, which you do notice when you side by side compare, when you get used to the just ever so slightly less clamping force of the PX8, the PX7 do maybe feel just a little bit too tight, and this could be really important for you if you are a glasses wearer. But what about sound quality? Well, interestingly, you can hear the Bowers sound DNA of the PX7 in the PX8. There are clear similarities. And in a quick AB, you might even think the PX7 sound better because they are bassier, but it doesn't take long. You only have to really play a small selection of music and then you'll realize that the bass from these, while it's impressive for the amount of it, it's actually, a coloration, there's like a thickening and a coloration that's just sitting itself on, it doesn't matter if it's music or any of the content that you're listening to. And then when you engage the noise cancelling, it goes even further in that regard. And obviously the PX8 do this a little bit, but this is more and then more again. And the PX7 are not compatible with the new Bowers and Wilkins music app, so you can't tune their sound like you would with the PX8. So I think the long and the short of it is, if you are considering the upgrade, from the PX7 to the PX8, well then I think you'll be in a happy place because the PX7 are not the PX8, sorry, are not so much different that you'll that they will rock your boat in terms of the overall sound character. But I think very quickly you will appreciate the nicer look, the nicer quality materials. But from a sound point of view, you will appreciate the the higher level of quality and the higher level of refinement in the important key areas. And you will also appreciate that all of the best bits are still there from the PX7, but all of the worst bits are now gone. Time to wrap things up. 
I asked myself the question, what do I think a wireless headphone system is supposed to offer? Good comfort, good sound, good battery, all of that, of course. But for me, the one key thing a good wireless system is supposed to offer is flexibility. Great sound anywhere for anything, any type of content, or really any type of source these days. And that is where I think the Bowers and Wilkins are. Oh, do strike a really fine, really good balance, actually. The look, the fit, the finish, the quality of the materials, and the sound quality, that kind of really warm, bass rich, glossy type of sound character. It's definitely pleasing. I think it's intended to be, intended to be pleasing, intended to make, you know, everything sound good. And I'm absolutely fine with that, especially once I've tweaked it a little bit to make it more to my liking. And I suppose that would be my one major criticism and complaint that only being able to adjust the bass and treble is really very 1990s. It would be nice to be able to have more control over the overall sound, but that aside, for the price, I think 575 pounds at the moment on Amazon, given the competition, the price of the other high quality solutions available, I think these are really fantastic headphones, absolutely fantastic. I really like them, I've been super impressed with them. And yeah, I hope you've been impressed with this review. I hope you found it useful and helpful. If you did, hit the thumbs up button and maybe consider subscribing to the channel if you enjoy my take on high-end audio in general, hi-fi headphones and more. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you all soon. Take care. Bye.